welcome to the Fortune and Glory playthrough. I am uh, playing against the Order of the Crimson Hand, and I'm using uh, two players co-op. I'm using Lee and Angel, um, and I'm about to begin the game. So the first thing we do in Fortune and Glory is we have each of the characters roll initiative. So for Lee Men Chen and Angel Espinosa, I'm using a white die for Lee and the red die for Angel, and I'm going to roll initiative to see who's going to go first. And it looks like um, Angel Espinosa is going to go for it first. I'm just going to leave the dice here so I can remember. And so that is the initiative phase. And I suppose I should very quickly just show you the cooperative game round card. So I'll let you read through that if you want. It's basically there are five stages uh, to each turn. One is the initiative phase, then the move phase, then the adventure phase, the villain phase, and the end phase. So that's just a quick little reference card, which is handy to have. So with that said, we are now on to the move phase. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll both our move dice at the same time. White for Lee, red for Angel. And we have uh, Lee gets to move three spaces, and Angel will get to move six. So that's a long way she can move. All right. So we go to the board and Lee is up first. She's over here in Hong Kong and she has a movement of three. Now I probably want to start heading her over towards the temples in the center of the board, try to get some of the glory out of them. So, uh, and if you move out of a city, it costs you one. So she's going to move one. Uh, we'll go two and we'll go three over to Persia. All right, and that's her move action. And now we go over to Angel Espinosa, who is here in Mexico City. She has a movement of six, and I'm wondering if she can make it all the way uh, to one of the temples. I'm not sure that she can. It would be one, two, three, four, five. Yes, she can. So she's going to move one out here, two to the Gulf of Mexico, three, four to South Pacific, five to the Ivory Coast, and six. She makes it all the way to... The Mine of the Crimson Hand. So she can start adventuring there. Excellent. All right, so that is the movement phase. And now we're on to the adventure phase. So what happens in the adventure phase is, of course, each of our heroes has some kind of adventure. All right, Lee goes first. She is just in a wilderness space. Now, if you're in a wilderness space, you roll one die. On a one, you must fight an enemy. On a 2 and 3, nothing much happens, you're just traveling as normal. And on a 4, 5, and 6, you draw an event card. So Lee is out there in Persia, let's see what she gets. And she gets a 5, which means she's going to be drawing an event card. Now events can be good, bad, or indifferent, we'll have a look. And for this, oh, okay, this is not that sounding good. Spread of the Crimson Hand. Play immediately. Oh, this is awful. I'm telling you, this expansion is going to kill me in about two turns. All right, and you can see this is the order of the Crimson Hand expansion card. So what to play immediately? So we must do it right now. It says, place a Crimson Hand Acolyte on any two artifact adventures. Limit one per artifact adventure. So that is awful. All right. So what do we do? We take two of our lovely Crimson Hand uh, goons and we put them out on the lowest, the two lowest cost uh, artifacts slash temples on the board. Now the card specifically said, I think, artifact. Uh, however, temples are considered artifacts when you collect them. So uh, the lowest cost artifact right now are the Gloves of Illusion. So they act, you actually place the uh, figure on the card itself for the artifact. They don't go out on the board. So I'm just placing over here on the card. And the Gloves of Illusion are over here. And the lowest uh, cost uh, temple is the Valley of Hades, which is up here in Scandinavia. So again, I'm placing the Crimson Hand figure on the card itself. Okay, boy, that was, that was awful. All right, and now uh, that was Lee's adventure, and now we have Angel Espinosa's adventure. Now she is at the Mine of the Crimson Hand, so of course she's going to start delving right in there, and she encounters her first danger. 
And as she's going into the temple, she finds a deadly assassin. Well, and you can see here now these are deadly encounters. And that looks like a promo card that probably came from one of the sets. It says, train from birth in the arts of killing the assassins of the Tugari are the most deadly in the world. All right. They need a better name, an easier one to say. All right, so she must fight. She either has to avoid them with agility, which is a deadly test, or she has to use cunning and gets two sixes. Wow, this is not going to be simple. So we'll take a look at her card. So for agility, she only has three dice, and for cunning, she has three dice. So I think what she's going to do is she will use her cunning rolling three dice because it's not a deadly test and she needs two successes so wow let's see if she can do that she gets one success and so if you get one success on a non-deadly test you keep going come on get another one and she gets two all right she nails and takes care of the deadly assassin so that is worth a potential five glory so there's five glory. I'm, I just stick it on the board. She hasn't collected it yet. Now she can camp down and collect it, or she can press on. And also because she's at a temple, uh, she actually collects one of the fortune. And I believe she gets that directly. So, ah, uh, boy, we're winning. We have one fortune. Woo! -hoo. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I think she's going to try once more. She's pressing on. And she encounters now a femme fatale. And okay, she has no special bonuses for that. So it's a danger villain femme fatale. And it says draw a random female villain and add them to the adventure. Roll a sneak test to get past the villain. If successful, the danger is passed. If discovered, complete any fight rounds and then flip over to the cliffhanger. Uh, and add them to the adventure. Wow, so we get to add... A random female villain to the adventure. Well, let me go to the deck and I'll randomly pull one out. Okay, so I've randomly drawn Vanessa Love. She's the mobster uh, female. And she has a search of four. Now, we're trying to uh, sneak past her to pass this danger. Um, so I need to call a number, roll four dice, and try not to roll that number. So let's say uh, a one. And I didn't roll any ones. So, we have snuck past her. Now, because this game with Crimson Hand is so harsh anyway, I'm not actually going to add her to the actual adventure. We have enough trouble as it is. And because um, Angel has snuck past her, we've basically defeated the second... Um, uh, danger here has been passed. So that one is also successful. It means we're going to get another um, fortune from the mine of the Crimson Hand. Uh, and what I forgot to be doing is, uh, as every time you get a success, you put a marker, a uh, collapse marker, on top of the temple. So I'm just going to put a couple of those on. Uh, it has a total uh, danger value of four, so it means when there are four tokens on it, we must roll for collapse. So I don't know if she should press on or not. Um, pressing her luck a little bit here. You know what? Once more. Let's give it one more go and see what we find. So another random car chase. So after she escapes from the, the female villain, she gets into a car chase. And it is she needs to pass an agility test twice with five plus. Her agility is three. So she will be rolling three dice. Trying to get fives. And there are no fives. So what happens is, whoosh, flips over to the cliffhanger, which is over a cliff. And that's where we end her turn. And I forgot to add the glory as well, but because she's at a cliff homer, cliffhanger, all the glory that she could have gotten goes away. Okay, that, I shouldn't have pressed my luck. I should have uh, camped down, taken the glory. But I didn't. All right. That 
concludes the adventure phase. And now we're on to the villain phase. And the first thing you do in the villain phase is you draw a villain event card. And I draw Surge of Darkness. All villains immediately take an extra adventure step outside of the normal turn order. Move the villain track one step forward. Well, here we go. We're already at one on our way to 15. Now, all villains immediately take an extra villain adventure step, which really sucks because what happens now is Sir Benjamin Crowley comes out. He's going to go to the highest priced place, and that is going to be the City of the Dead over here in Italy. So that's one extra adventure uh, step for him. And the Inquisitor now becomes ready to come out. Not good. All right. That was the villain event. And of course, all villain events are horrible. Uh, and now we are into the outpost phase. So during the outpost phase, I forgot to mention the Dark Sanctuary for these guys, for the Crimson Hand, is located in Chicago. There's only one Dark Sanctuary right now. So what we do is we roll one dice. And on a one, two, three, no acolytes come out. On a four, five, six, we would get another acolyte of the Crimson Hand coming out onto one of the, four, uh, one of the adventure places, the temples or the artifacts. Okay, and now it's the villain adventure step. So we have Sir Benjamin Crowley, and he's at the temple. He has a search value of three. So he's going to roll three dice on a four, five, six. He will have successful searches. And he gets two successful searches. Had he rolled a one, he would have taken damage. So he didn't. So he has two successful searches, which means two of the uh, fortune come off of the temple and go into the player area, the Crimson Hand player card. So that was his uh, step. And the next one is the Inquisitor now is going to come out onto the board and go to um, the next highest place, which will actually be the mine, of, uh, the mine of the Crimson Hand, which is exactly where Angel Spinoza is. Okay, that's not good. And now to top off all the horrible things that can take place, um, let's go over to the, uh, the temple cards here and we'll explain about how the Crimson Hand Acolytes operate in the end phase. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the Crimson Hand Acolytes actually go on the cards themselves. And what they do uh, is they, at the beginning of the end phase, which is right now, they actually uh, put one um, success token uh, onto uh, each, of the, each of the cards. So on the Gloves of Illusion, because he's there, he's secretly in the background uh, trying to collect the Gloves of Illusion. So you can see they're going to start, uh, Crimson Hand can, is going to start collecting artifacts very quickly because they have these accolades in the background uh, helping out the main villains which is bad for us. And the other one is going to go here on the uh, Valley of Hades. And of course, uh, they have a success, they grab a fortune. And that's unfortunate as well. <laughs> okay, so that's how the Acolytes work. So every turn at the beginning of the end phase, they will add one success uh, to uh, one of the artifacts. And that is that is, why, that, that is, to me, why it makes Crimson Hand one of the hardest ones to try to beat, because the Acolytes start coming out and just, they start collecting artifacts so quickly you can't beat them. All right, let's go back to the main board and uh, end up, finish off for this turn. Okay, so to finish up, the Crimson Hand now has collected three fortune in total, and you cash that in for yet another victory point for them. They are up to... Two of 15. Okay, so... Okay, and of course I'm forgetting things. At the Mine of the Crimson Hand, we had Angel actually succeeded twice, so we would put two tokens on here. And when uh, Crowley showed up um, and actually got two successes, I put them... I put the two successes on the wrong temple because he is at the City of the Dead, and his two successes should go over here. So just to clarify that, 
every time a success goes on, uh, I guess these should be flipped over as well. I'm not really sure what the difference between the sides are, but um, actually I think this is a successful danger past, and this is uh, towards the temple uh, maybe possibly collapsing. So just wanted to clarify that. Angel had two successes over here on the Mine of the Crimson Hand, uh, and Crowley had two successes over here at the City of the Dead. So just want to make sure this is all set up properly. All right, so the, here we are. I'll go back to the main board, do a slight recap, and then we will uh, go on to turn two the next day. Okay, the end of turn one. We're already in trouble. Crimson Hand is at two. We have Crowley out here. On the City of the Dead, we have Angel and the Inquisitor now are both at the Mine of the Crimson Hand. And we have two Acolytes on the other on the other temple, Valley of Hades, and at the Gloves of Illusion up here. So the Crimson Hand well on their way to absorbing everything on the board and we are already having troubles. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Join me next time for turn two and we'll see if Lee and Angel can uh, press on, get some more fortune and try to put a stop to the evil plans of the Crimson Hand. Thanks for watching.